Ever wondered how players alt tap in general? They never really taught anyone how to do that in the original game, so that's what this video and the subsequent series it starts will do. Alt tapping has many different mini skills to it that take a lot of practice and muscle memory timing. While the actual tapping portion is part of it, the fretting and the rhythmic timing is too. Let's take a section example here, Solo B from Silvera. We like to call these types of trills four set, which just means that four taps will reset each measure to the starting orientation. In English, this type of trill layout has you tap, fret, tap, then fret on each beat line. That means on the following beat line, you'll start the same way that you started the last one, making it a consistent pattern. I recommend that you take this section to practice and slow it all the way down to 30% if you're new. And don't discourage yourself because of how slow you're starting, consistency practice starts snowballing fast when you're practicing the correct way. These notes are tap notes, so we don't have to worry about elbow strumming in this case, you can have both your hands at the frets without worry. Alt tapping four set patterns starts with your fretting hand and the thing called anchoring. This one was taught in the original games, but its versatility wasn't really expanded upon. The pull-off mechanics of taps and hobos allow you to hold the lower notes of a sequence to be hit each time the higher frets are released. The catch is that the higher notes have to be released, so if you don't tap them lightly or fast enough, then it won't work. The speed at which you actually tap also doesn't matter, you can input the trill note for actually a single millisecond, and it'll still work, it's just better to over-register than tap slow and under-register. With alt tapping, it's important to recognize how fast you're actually meant to tap as well, which is where rhythmic timing comes in. Accentation is what you see other players do when they strum a bit harder every so often in a long strumming sequence, or when they tap a bit harder on the first or every four taps in the section. It's part of the basis to how the body processes and responds to rhythm. In a four set trill like Silvera Solo B, if you struggle with tapping the correct speed, pay attention to every fourth trill and tap that one in specific a bit harder. For each beat line now, we're pre-anchoring, meaning we're holding the anchored note down with our fretting index finger before tapping, then doing a hard tap to start the inputs. That tap also has to be quick to let go and give room for the fretting hand. The fretting hand does its same quick motion and moves in time for the soft tap, and then repeat to the fret, and then bang, one beat line is done. With solo B specifically, that's all you need. If the anchored note changes, the timing at which you should be changing anchors is essentially the same that you start the tapping each beat line. If you can pre-anchor on an anchor change, great. If not, you slide the anchor on the first fretting input of the following beat line. Four set is the most basic type of alt tapping. Cry for Eternity's Eternal Solo A is a two set trill pattern, which is the same as the four set except every single trill is an accent. But there's clearly something different about this one, I mean, it's much faster. The way extremely fast trills are hit relies a ton on the wrist and forearm of both arms, so if you have general weak upper body conditioning, don't worry about it, tapping will be completely fine. When building tapping endurance and speed, it's best to ensure that you're holding the controller right so you're using the right axis of movement with your wrist, otherwise you're building the wrong muscle memory. While tapping, make sure that your wrists are pushed a bit outwards and your hands are rotated a bit downwards. Try to do every input as lightly as you physically can while still inputting the notes, and sit with your spine as straight as possible. If you're crossing your legs to play or if you sit on one leg to play, stop immediately. Not only does that intensify the risk of deep vein thrombosis, but it also hugely restricts your movement and makes the gameplay less fun overall. If you get stuck on this for a while and don't feel like you're improving in speed, tons of people feel for you. I was stuck at a 32 notes per second trill speed limit for 6 years before improving it. Some people never do. If it's not working out and it's stressing you to try to build speed, don't worry about it. There's many more fast sets to clone hero skill than just your fast movement ability. Now, how about 3 set trill patterns like the ones you see in Ode to Angel Livia? This is where people who've played drums will have a huge advantage as alt tapping in triplet form is pretty similar to drum tech. In odd number trill patterns, you are essentially having to double that number to figure out the reset orientation, in this case being 6. After 6 taps, you'll be back to your starting position. That means for the first 3, you'll be doing a tap, fret, tap, but the next 3 will be a fret, tap, fret before repeating. This is a huge muscle memory related thing, so if you don't get it right away, don't sweat it as muscle memory builds overnight. Try it again later and you'll have much better luck so long as you keep trying. Accentation is weird with this one, as it's totally reasonable to accent every 6th input. But that just seems to mess with the muscle memory in my experience, so to avoid that, don't do accentation. When transitioning anchors between the first and second set of threes, your anchor change should be before your fretting input of the second set of threes, right after the final tap of the first three. If your anchor change is between the second and the first of another set and it's moving upwards, the same anchor change structure applies as four set. Though if it's moving downwards, doing that's going to feel extremely awkward. Top players will typically do some sort of specific tech to pre-change anchors here, or tap the trills as extended triplets or chimneys or something else funky. Doing it as a beginner is very weird, so I would suggest just avoiding it if at all possible and giving pre-anchoring a try if you have to. There are 5 set, 7 set, 9 set, 11 set, and so on orientations of tapping. Though as the numbers get higher and higher, that begins to feel more like a 1 set than anything else, which just so happens to be the most famous set of trills. 1 set trills, 
sometimes called castles, have no set rules. Through the Fire and Flames intro from GH3 is a great example of one set trills, and people over the years have come up with a plethora of crazy methods to hit this section. If you want to just straight alt tap this section, try this. Get a mental layout of this section by thinking that every other note is designated to whatever hand. With one cycle of the TTFAF intro, for instance, the tapping hand's job will be the first red, the following blue, the next yellow, two oranges, a blue, an orange, and another blue. The fretting hand's job is the first yellow, the next red, two blues, a yellow, a red, and ending with two yellows. When you start to put them together, it's going to feel like a mess of avoiding your other fingers to try to input the right notes, but that's exactly how it's meant to feel. There is a big difference with the TTFAF intro over the other sections I've talked about so far, and that's that the first note is a strum, and all the following are hopos. Meaning if you miss a note, you'll have to elbow strum, so let's talk about that. To start a tapping section that begins with a strum, there are a few ways of going about it. You can strum it normally, do a double fret input, and move your tapping hand to the right fret as quick as you can. Lots of top players do that, but elbow strumming is extremely effective for all skill types. Hold down the anchored note under the strum note of a given section. Hold the strum you have to do with your tapping hand with your elbow placed generally above where the strum bar is on the guitar. The motion to start will then be to bring your elbow down onto the strum bar while holding the fret and release the fret after the strum has been input. This will take a ton of getting used to, but I've seen all ages and body types do this method. You're not incapable, it's just tough to get perfect. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Have a day.